Hello, hola YouTube. Bolivia, 27th of March, March in uh, 2020. And uh, now since uh, a bit more than one, one week, we have um, increasingly stricter um, measures, quarantine measures here in Bolivia. We only have, uh, we still only have like 50 confirmed cases of COVID-19 infection, but uh, um, we're in quarantine and uh, I'm actually on my way to, to the supermarket because today is the only day of the week that I'm allowed to go between a, between 7 and 12 in the morning. Now since since yesterday we have a system where your um, identity card number determines what day of the week you're allowed to go shopping and only one person per family can go and um, they just impose these stricter regulations little by little uh, the, the last couple of days so actually day before yesterday <laughs> <laughs> day before yesterday they were uh, uh, I took my motorbike to go shopping in the morning I thought that was okay me and many other people went with vehicles to the supermarket but my bike was confiscated and yesterday oh man I had to spend several hours to get it back I got a fine and that fine would quadruple if I didn't get get it back the same day and uh, I had to walk like probably about 20 kilometers to pay the fee to pay the fine in the bank then to go to the police station to get a special permit to walk around because it wasn't really my 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 free day of walking around since they started this uh, schedule yesterday determined by your ID card and uh, it was crazy and I had to walk almost to the next little town to, <laughs> to get to the deposit uh, to the next little satellite town here, Sakaba, to get to the deposit where, where the motorcycles <laughs> were kept but I did get it luckily <laughs> so now I'm careful you need to have a special permit to, to ride a vehicle obviously people who work in healthcare people who maybe work maintain power grid and infrastructure and stuff I suppose so uh, what's this gonna lead to is this gonna be successful we're anticipating to have these very strict lockdown measures here in Bolivia until at least uh, 14th of uh, April something like that so are these things gonna work these strict quarantine measures are we going to be able to eradicate the disease here? Well, why not? Short term, perhaps. Suppose that Bolivia and some other countries in the region here have very similar, very strict quarantine measures and also relatively low infection rates so far. Uh, maybe we can actually achieve some sort of white zones here without the infection, but you know, sooner or later things has to start getting back to normality and I'm not at all naive about this I think it's gonna be a very long ordeal and very tough uh, but trying to trying to be optimistic I I've always thought of Bolivia as a country that could potentially be rather resilient towards this sort of black swan event for the for the same reason that Bolivia is one of the is actually the poorest country in South America because most people here actually do work in the local economy the economy is very low level and we're quite self uh, sustainable when it comes to production of food and stuff obviously there's lots that imported but if you compare for example with my home country Sweden it's on the other end of the scale like people in prepping community and people who are interested in resilience and those sort of things always bring up the fact that Sweden is very
very very dependent on import and doesn't produce any food anymore for itself so I suppose we're not gonna starve here <laughs> I hope but who knows who knows how, how this is gonna end we just take one day at a time and me being from Sweden obviously I compare with Sweden which is like the opposite so in Sweden for example they had from the very start an attitude of you know we're not going to be able to stop this we might just let it burn out and try to mitigate try just try to mitigate the consequences although the policies of a country like Sweden have been is very controversial of course since uh, most people doubt that they're doing enough to actually mitigate then we also have this whole aspect of culture you know and opposite to what is the the current dogma in my home country in Sweden where the whole axiom is that culture doesn't matter it doesn't, it's not important uh, of course it is of course it's important everybody nowadays looking at places like Singapore and and uh, South Korea has relatively so successful so far. Yeah, sure, they got the technology, they got the resources, but they also have the culture. Um, the in Spanish you would say pertenencia, sense of coherence, sense of community and stuff, and uh, obedience. Um, well, we have that here too, and you know. Although in the cities, yeah, like in Cochabamba where I'm now, it's a very strong community feeling. Since a couple of months ago we had this citizen coup where uh, the then president Morales was chased out of the country and uh, since then we have a very strong feeling of community here I would say. and. Uh, a uh, very strong bond between the people and the police and uh, other functions of the society so I think that's a good thing however on the countryside it's a different story on the countryside you still have the masistas and uh, on the countryside they of course they're gonna try to use this situation now to, to stir up unrest and uh, to try to disturb the current order so uh, we don't know how that's how that's gonna play play out, especially after a little while when people are getting more fed up with these restrictions and people are getting more frustrated. So that would be a potentially dangerous thing here. So now I'm on my way back home from the big the big supermarket, filled up my 60 liter duffel bag with groceries. So I'm going to mention one more thing I came to think about concerning Bolivia, special conditions here when it comes to resilience and stuff. For the same reason I believe, well, I just naively assumed that Bolivia would be pretty resilient towards uh, being isolated and closed border and having closed borders for some time. I mean relatively, in relative terms. Of course it's, that's tough for any country. But I think measures like these, strict quarantine measures, are very, very painful for a lot of people because not many people here can work from home. So, uh, so this is going to be difficult. Wrapping up the video I started to make, to going to the supermarket. This is about as far away from my house I'm going to be able to go. Well, next seven days until next Friday. Watching my dog here right outside the door. 
pretty good here in Cochabamba actually. We had only three confirmed cases until yes until yesterday. We had three confirmed cases and they were all known. The chains of contagion were all known emanating from that flight from Spain. However, yesterday they discovered another case, a woman with chest pain, a woman who works in the market, La Cancha, the big, huge market. She went to hospital, she was tested and she was tested positive. Really bad news. So we're gonna have a lot of new cases here in Cochabamba too. Let's just hope <clears throat> two or three weeks of quarantine. Well, two weeks is probably gonna be too little from now on, but three weeks perhaps. Let's hope uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be effective. And meanwhile, in my other home country, in Sweden, the storm is coming. And uh, yeah, let's see who comes out of this first. You know, uh, wherever you are, good luck and God bless. And hope I'm gonna be able to start posting things I like on this channel again, like going to explore the, these amazing surroundings, the hillsides around here, stuff that I want to do. Well, thanks for watching anyway. <clears throat>